Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I haven't done a sit down Sunday, any kind of video in probably like a year. Um, and I wanna say my last one was probably telling you why we aren't PGS testing. And from the title of the video, I'm sure you are here to hear why we've changed our minds. Um, I feel like I jinxed myself by saying it's not for us, we're just not there yet. <laughs> a year later, three miscarriages later, we've changed our minds. Really quickly before we get into this video, just wanna remind you all, if you've been following me on here, watch my other videos on Instagram, you are aware that we are, what do they call it, crowdfunding for our PGS testing for IVF. It is gonna cost us $5,000 out of pocket. It is $4,000 for the testing and then $1,000 for the freezing. So um, we've already spent 20 plus thousand dollars on our very first round of IVF and then to freeze our last batch, medications that weren't cut. It's just like, even when it's covered, and I mean, I am so thankful that I was able to find this job that would give us great IVF coverage because we'd be, I don't know where we'd be, I don't even wanna think about it because I'm just forever thankful for this school job. But unfortunately, it's not covered. I'll get into that um, later in the video. But I just want to let you guys know that I am selling shirts. I am selling um, t-shirts, long sleeve shirts and sweatshirts. I'm really sorry. I thought when I picked a shirt, all the colors would be available, but it seems that I just picked gray. I didn't mean to do that at all. So I apologize in advance. Let me show you guys what they look like if you're interested. A Simply Gina shirt. It's a t-shirt. It's got, can you see that? Simply Gina in a heart with a coffee in a sweatshirt, t-shirt, in long sleeve shirt form. Again, I'm sorry about the color options. And then we have a I like coffee and maybe three people shirt in a long sleeve shirt, t-shirt, and a sweatshirt. Um, I chose this route as opposed to asking for money because I find it very weird to just ask people for money and I feel like if you're buying something, you're getting something and you're also helping us out. So for each shirt, we get about like eight to $11. So every little purchase adds up. If you are interested in just donating, there is an option to donate with your purchase on Bonfire and I will leave a Venmo and a PayPal account down below because many people have just said, I'd rather just give all the money to you. So either way, I'm grateful. Just following my channel, watching my videos is helping us and supporting us. So whatever you can do to help is great. If not, just, just say a little prayer for us that our next round works out. Anyway, so if you've watched our video on like why we weren't gonna do PGS testing, it was because, you know, the doctor was like, you're young. You know, we don't see a need to do that right now unless you really want to. You can go watch that whole video. It'll explain to you. I'll leave a link down below why I chose not to at that point. Most, the biggest reason was because it's so expensive. Um, so now we are a year and a half later into our IVF journey. Um, I started in May of 2018. We have had one, two, three, four egg retrievals, four transfers, oh, and a partridge in a pear tree. I hate, I never thought I'd be one of these people that is listing off all of the things they've gone through. So we had one transfer with our first doctor, it didn't work, panicked, what, what's next? I'm just gonna do a quick recap of our journey. I have a whole what led us to IVF video as well, I'll leave that link down below. I have a whole infertility playlist if you're curious, just go watch all those videos. I'm just giving a quick recap of where we are right now. So in September of 2018, our package that we paid for, nothing worked. And so I was like, the day before that, I got a call for an interview at a school job. Long story short, one path for me to working in September didn't work out. And I guess in a rampage, I applied to every job I could find and a power position became available to me. And I don't know if it's just New Jersey or all states, if you have a state job, the insurance is amazing. And I was like, oh my God, this is just like amazing. I hated my job last year though. It was very hard. <laughs> I hated leaving the nanny world. It was just like 2019 was a struggle. I'm very happy now. I have an amazing student. I am have, I'm just very happy with my work life now. 
it was a bit of a struggle from going to nanny life to like actual like working in a place life the pay was it was a major pay cut there were so many reasons but anyway so we did another round in December yes I ovulated early so we got two eggs one fertilized barely made it to the blastocyst stage on day six we transferred it worked it was like a Christmas miracle we miscarried in January so we are we actually it's been like it, I think yesterday was like one year since our first miscarriage um okay so then we did another egg retrieval because we had nothing to freeze in February of 2019 we didn't do a transfer we did a freeze all cycle because my progesterone was a little bit high um and that was a whirlwind of a retrieval because we had one egg fertilized perfectly day one i think two the next day we had an egg mature later on it was just like it was they tell you you'll get a call day one day three five day five we were getting updates for six days in a row and i was constantly on edge and I was just, we had four embryos to freeze in the end. And we didn't decide to test because again, I was like, you know, it's fine, whatever. Um, whatever's meant to be will be. So then we prepped for a FET for April. Um, we transferred, that baby would be due in two days if that worked out. So it's kind of been um, very emotional. Um, I couldn't wait for the holidays to get over because of, you know, everything and we had our first success in December of flash it was just, I'm very happy that it's all over I just want to get through January 8th as well because I'm also emotional about that which I'm sure if you've gone through a miscarriage you totally understand um so that didn't work I had a gut feeling that one wasn't gonna work I don't know why I have video about that too I don't know if that's linked in the infertility um just browse through all my videos <laughs> I'm a hot mess um, so then what happened? So that failed. That was a Mother's Day miscarriage, by the way. Um, so I waited a little bit. We did another transfer in the end of August. That one was rough because we transferred two. Um, I had a feel, I, for some reason, I just had a feeling that the next two embryos that we were going to be done, we were going to be transferring to, the, those were going to be our babies. Um... It turned out one stuck and we kind of made it further than we've ever made it before. We saw it on the ultrasound, we saw a heartbeat. It was just, it was heartbreaking. That hit me so hard and from October to now, it's been very hard for me to get out of a funk. Um, I started January fresh, I'm trying to stay positive. What are we on day five? Uh, I feel like I'm doing good five days in, um, but yeah, so anyway why we decided to do the testing is because the doctor explained that my amh is low which means that i don't produce i'm sorry the dog is eating right next to me so if you hear it, it's buster eating um my egg quality doesn't appear to be at its best because i guess they can't test egg quality it's based off of like how they mature how many you're getting my ovulating early stories and stuff it just she just thinks my egg quality isn't at its best. I forget my AMH level. Is that the level that tells you? Your, I feel like I should be like a textbook of information, but there are so many different abbreviations, words, and all these things that like I just can't remember. So that is low. And the day after we miscarried, I started reading It Starts With The Egg. So that's why I decided to join. I decided to join Young Living before all of this, before my transfer, just because I wanted to get all the toxins out, and I'm very happy that I made that choice because of how bad toxins are for your egg health. Um, I listened to a podcast on the Infertility Mafia. I forget how far back it goes, but they were trying, the podcast, I think it was like their live show. They were talking about how bad toxins affect egg quality, and after I heard that episode, I kept there was something nagging me like, we need to start fresh. Like my eggs from that round, our embryos might not be the best, but I was trying to stay positive. I just had a feeling that I needed to like do a fresh new batch. Dad called, I lost my train of thought. I don't know what I was talking about. Rats. Maybe my egg quality, starting to read, it starts with the egg. I don't know, anyway. 
Um, so when I went into the, the WTF meeting with the doctor, she was explaining to me all these things about my eggs and like why she thinks it's time to do the PGO testing. She ultimately left it up to me because she knows that I was so adamant about it. Um, but discussing it with Rob and stuff, we decided since we've had so many losses, it is time to do the testing. So I've been taking all of the supplements. I've removed all the toxins in my house. I don't think I have one toxic household item to be honest with you. Um, nothing has a fragrance because even though something says it's all natural, if it has the word fragrance in it, it is toxic. Do your own research. Um, it is awful for your health. It is awful for the, like putting candles in your house and like those plugins, it is so bad for your breathing. Um, they say that it's linked to asthma in children. It's just insane. When I opened that window, when I opened that door in Google to like Google all the things about how bad toxic fragrances and toxins, I was just like, holy cow. But anyway, that's a whole other video. If you want to hear about my toxic free household life, let me know. Um, the only thing I have trouble reducing is my caffeine. I've been really good at just having two cups a day. I talked to the doctor about it and she said that there are worse things in life and that there's not enough actual evidence to prove that caffeine is like one of the factors that's bad for you. Um, so she said, she's really good that I'm doing all of these things, but she said like, don't drive yourself crazy. So caffeine is my vice. Um, I, I have a really hard time giving that up. But I think like as it gets closer to like the actual egg retrieval, maybe I'll go back to just one cup and find a very good um, decaf coffee because just regular decaf coffee is also bad for you. It's just like, yeah, there's so many things that like affect this. Like I've gone plastic free, like 99% because plastic BPA, even if it says it's BPA free, like if you heat up plastic, the toxins are being released. I'm terrified to dishwash plastic. It's just, I hope that like once I have a baby, I'm less on edge about all of these things. But anyway, so we have not yet decided when we're gonna start our next cycle because um, I'm just not mentally in a spot where I'm ready to start all of the um, stimulation drugs, the constant being on edge waiting for the phone calls. Um, I feel like this is more of like a whole IVF update than just like why we decided to do PGS testing. Um, maybe I'll call it that. I'm just thinking out loud. Um, so, I, we were going to start at the end of January, but I got my period and I was just like, I'm not ready for this. Um, because the doctor said, call with your next cycle, we'll get the medication ordered and stuff. And when it came, I was just like, am I ready to do this in four weeks? And my instant gut reaction was, no, we're not doing this yet. Um, I'm just not there. If you've gone through this, it is, I can't even explain. It's exciting because it's like, this could be the time, this could be the round, but it's terrifying after you've already had so much loss and heartache um, because you know all the things that could go wrong, you know the highs and the lows of this whole cycle. This, it's just, it's terrifying. So maybe we'll do it in February. Um, I'm excited to lose all, I'm doing the, a fitness macro challenge for the next six weeks because I've gained 12 to 15 pounds since my wedding and I just want to feel good for my next cycle. I want to be mentally feeling good for my next cycle. I want to be feeling positive. I want to be feeling more relaxed. There's so many things that I just haven't lined up yet for us to start. So we're just not there yet. But moving forward, we are testing our embryos for the $5,000 charge. It covers eight embryos, so that's good. We never get a lot, so I've, four was our max. So even if like we have to do two back-to-back -back egg retrievals, that's what we'll do to get enough to test. I'm just terrified at this point because if we would have paid for the testing, 
I mean, we have one more frozen embryo. Oh, we, it would have been like, okay, you got nothing. You know what I mean? Like maybe the one that's frozen is okay, but it's not like the best. It was a day six slow grower. It was an egg that matured later. It was just like, that's why we haven't transferred it yet. So we're, we'll obviously test that one too. Um, so it's just so much. Oh, if you have any questions about PGS testing in general, I think my doctor's calling it PGT testing now, pre-genetic, I don't know what, I don't know what it is. Cause every time I say PGS, she's like, it's PGD or PGT testing. It's the same thing as PGS. I guess, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry I touched my hair so much too. Um, if you have any questions about that, a quick overview of what it even is. I should have said that. I'm so bad at these sit down videos. It's where they take your frozen embryo and they take a little biopsy. Well, no, I think it's fresh. They take the biopsy when it's fresh and then they freeze it to tell you whether or not it is genetically normal or abnormal. So another main reason why I agreed to do this test is because I left this out. See, I'm so scattered. My last miscarriage came back as, um, I think it was a trisomy 16. It, there was an extra, I didn't save the report because it told me the gender and it was just, it would have been a boy and um, it, I didn't want to, at the time I was just like, I don't delete, like I don't, I wish they didn't tell me that it was a boy. It was just a whole roller coaster of emotions. And now I wish I saved it. Um, it had an extra copy of some, chromosome that's not like a huge issue but those those embryos don't make it past if they have an extra copy of that um they don't make it past the first trimester so i guess it is a huge issue um like that it would have never made it so that was like the number one reason why we decided to go through with the testing is because you know we had one come back abnormal if that testing came back as normal, I don't know if I'd be making the decision to do the PGS testing, you know what I mean? Um, it's still very controversial, the testing, because you can get a PGS, T, whatever testing, embryo, beautiful, positive, abnormal, like normal, and it could still ha not work, it could still miscarry, there's still an array, there's still a whole load of issues. But I think like, just eliminating a little bit of the risk is gonna make me feel a little bit better. I don't know. At this point, if I ever see two pink lines again, it's never gonna be like, yes, this is it. I'm gonna be on edge the whole time. So God help me when that happens again. <sighs> All right, if I left anything out, let me know down below if you have a question. I don't know who Buster's barking at. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to check out our bonfire store and help us get to that next part of our journey. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.